Your first film, Lebanon, which won the Golden Lion here in 2009, was based on your experiences as a gunner in a tank. Is Foxtrot partly autobiographical as well? The idea uh, to make this film uh, came out of a story that happened to me which a long time ago. What was the story? When my uh, el eldest daughter went to school, she never woke, uh, woke up on time. And in order not to be late, she would ask me to call for a taxi. This habit cost us quite a bit of money. and it. <laughs> It seemed to me like a bad education, so one morning I got mad and told her to take the bus like everyone else do. And if that's why she'll be late, then she'll be late. Maybe she need to learn the hard way to wake up on time. Her bus was line five. Twenty minutes, maybe half an hour after she left, I hear in the radio that a terrorist blew himself up in line five and the dozens of people were killed. I tried to call her, of course, but the cellular uh, operator collapsed because of the unexpected uh, load. So I experienced one hour that was worse than all the war, all the Lebanon war, I think. After one hour, she returned home. She missed the bus in a blink. I mean, she, she, she ran to it, she saw it leave the station, and she took the next bus. In, in a way, um, Michael, the hero, doing something that maybe look um, right and logical to do, but... What did you do? Do you remember? Were you in panic? Did you do stuff that sort of disappointed you, that you did I, the wrong stuff? I will tell you the truth. I have one uh, blur blackness from this hour. It was... It's gone. No, it's not gone, but yeah, it was so... Uh, because I felt like I, I sent my daughter to die, you know, like uh, somehow Michael. Hi, it's Jonathan. I'm in the middle of the world, I'm not even in the world. But you know, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go home. I want to see him. With me. With Jonathan. With Benjela. בן שלך במחסום דרכים על קו התפר מחזיק ציר אספקה. שמונה שניות. אני דורש שתחזירו לי את הילד שלי. עכשיו! The film is sort of divided into three parts. The first part, the parents, Michael and Daphna, they hear that their son, Jonathan, is dead. He has fallen in the line of duty. How do you film grief? It's more related to how, I think, to how I worked with my actors to express this. Um, my, uh, my, I have my way to work with my actors. Also in Lebanon I did it and also here. I, because we are talking about something that should be beyond acting. They really need to squeeze their souls in a way, so I don't turn off the camera between the takes. I just say, first position, do another take. I'm talking during the shot, I stress the actors, I describe him uh, what he's going through, tells him what he feels, and I do it very, very intensive and very personally, in the character context, of course. I turn the shot into a session. The actor does not know when the cut will release him, until he does not care anymore. Uh, I believe that when you are go through a difficulty, physical or mental, even extreme difficulty, at some point you will, uh, you will get to the stage when you are really just there and you don't care anymore. And in this moment you can really achieve the true and... Uh, this, is, this is quite a primitive method, by the way, but it produces fruits. Second part of the film, we are with Jonathan at, uh, at his border patrol. I think it's roadblock, let's call roadblock, it roadblock. That's simply <laughs> what it is. And then the film changes in tone dramatically. Why? The roadblock for me is a microcosmos. Yeah, of and this that's society why and uh, the the Mercedes you scene, the last scene, is a climax of an unhealthy situation, a situation that uh, getting more and more crooked. The Mercedes burial expresses uh, repress and denial. You prefer to bury 
the true in the mud that we prefer to bury the true in the mud that we create rather than confront it and ask ourselves penetrating questions. So I really wanted that people will uh, see the broad picture, will see the allegory. So that's why I choose to do it. Lebanon did uh, raise a lot of discussion. What, what do you expect from this one? And the people will talk about it. The people will, uh, will see the broad picture and will talk about it because uh, I feel that people prefer to repress it, to deny it, to bury it. You know, if I would have done a, f a, 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 f a movie about a terrible crime in the police, the next morning, nobody will say nothing happened uh, like this happened in the. They will understand this is a film, and but if you touch the army, it's very sensitive, you know. Do they see you as a traitor? The opposite. Uh, when I, when I, I will tell you something. Every human society should strive to be better, to improve itself, and the basic and only condition, the necessary and ba the basic necessary condition for improvement, is the ability to to accept self-criticism. You know, someone said, I don't remember who, that our mistakes are the failures of our children. So if I criticize the place I live, I do it because I worry, I do it because I want to protect it, I do it from love. <laughs>